Hi and welcome to another episode and what we've got here is is the Commodore 128 personal computer. This is part three. Now I've got my Pro-V, I've got my Commodore 128 to SCART, all going to the OSSC. Oh, so many acronyms. Now, the yes, I've got the Lumafix 128 in there and I've got the VDC memory upgrade thingy, RAM upgrade thing which I probably never will get to show off properly because really it's only sort of a GOS, GEOS stuff and I don't have the fancy mouse and currently I do not have a SD loader thingy because I contacted the company if it'd be okay to swap it. They said yes after some time. Then they sat on it for two weeks and then tell me, okay, they'll let someone else know. Then, then they get back to me and then they've told me that took like four days and then they've told me they're going to tell somebody else and then not heard anything back. I don't know what they're playing at, quite frankly. It's like, why? Why be like that? If you don't want to swap it, don't do it. But now they've got my SD thing and then sadly it's all money spent by Retrotech Ralph, which, you know, they get money for nothing now. It's just wrong of them. Now, I really would like to have my SD reader thingy, um, but they don't have a telephone number. Anyway, going back to this instead of me ranting, inside is the Lumafix 128. It has the SD, uh, sorry, the VDC memory inside, which is all great and everything. Um, but I probably won't get to show that, as I say, because I don't have a way to load SD stuff right now and I don't even have a mouse that would take care of that. If there's something else that takes advantage of that, please let me know. I think there might be some uh, homebrew demo type stuff. But anyway, the Lumafix stuff, that's what we want to show today. Now, because I don't have the SD loader stuff, I can't really do an awful lot of showing. But let's get on with it. So, I've already pressed the 40 slash 80 display button. The C128 SCART is already turned on. Um, let's just flick across so that you get some darkness to look at. I shall turn on the computer. That should do something. Hopefully. Why is it doing anything? There we go. There we go. Sometimes the OSSC doesn't always pick it up. Now, to me, on my monitor, I have a really nice steady picture. There's a little bit, a tiny little bit of colour bleed, but ever so slight. A little bit of ghosting, I suppose, maybe a bit more the correct term for it. Um, but with all this black, I can't really see any um, jail barring going on. So nice, steady, wonderful picture for me to looking at. So Lumafix has helped with that. And of course, the SCART thing has helped as well. Where's that gone? I seem to have lost the picture there we go <laughs> things are strange I've got too much stuff going on over there right so anyway let's go to press 6 for monitor because this is a bit the only thing I can really show you right now of where the lettering's nice so we'll put the shift lock on we can see the lettering there um, let's see some symbols yeah so that's Nice. So I'm going to turn it off now though. And I'm going to press the, the 40 slash display, 40 slash 80 display even. Turn it all across, turn on the Pro V in waiting. See now you got a nice bit of green coming directly from the Pro V. Turn on the Commodore. And now we have a nice wonderful yellow screen because I have the servant thing installed, which you've seen already. Um, but for me as well, there's hardly any colour bleed, a little bit of ghosting, and very little gel barring. I can see a little bit, but I'd have to I have to sort of stare for it to see it. But when we actually go into the normal Commodore 64 basic. Oh, that was the same thing as before, wasn't it? I don't know how to get back from that. Can I sorry? press the reset button all the wonderful bouncing around there we go we actually need to press nine not six press return 
and there we go we get this so as you can see again very little color bleeding the Lumafix has really really helped because it wasn't so great before but it has cleaned stuff up by using the Lumafix now the one thing I want to say about the Lumafix if I can bring this across now um, let's go back to big picture so you can see what I'm pointing at the Lumafix itself looks like this and this is actually pot one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up. Now it recommends that you do the wide and narrow lines first, and that represents megahertz, uh, sorry, one megahertz, which is pot number one, and slash RAS, which is the number two on the pots. So when it's installed, it goes that way. So it's the one actually closest to you, you want to play around with first, and then the second one along. That's, that's what you want to do there. For me, it turned out I actually had to do um, pot six as well. So it means popping it back out again and um, putting it in, you know, to do number six. Uh, flicking the dip switch and doing number six. Now, the other thing I do want to point out though, it also says be very careful about shorting the chip. Now, the one thing I actually used is what they kindly sent along anyway which is custom information of turn the pots up to 12 times, which turned out to be true, The um, especially number one. I had to turn that a lots of times, like full circles, um, before it actually started doing anything. And then when it did, it was ever so sliding. We're talking, you know, millimeter turns at a time to get it just right. And then do the narrow lines and get that as best as I could. And then go back to the, uh, the wide lines, the one megahertz, and do it just ever so slightly again. And then, of course, when I had to do number six, the two megahertz as well. I use this, as you can see, I did a little fold, and it sits just in between the pots and the CPU legs. So, holding that in place, since I'm right handed, I was holding that in place, sort of shoved down that little gap, and then using my trusty screwdriver, which has a spinny top, so it's a bit easier to hold, and turning clockwise. Uh, with them. Now I recommend using a screwdriver like this because it's got the spinny top you can get a sort of a firm grip and do it but even so you are quite likely to slip. I've got quite steady hands but even so you know after turning it 12 times it gets a little bit eh and it'd be even more so you know using a, a tiny little screwdriver. So as I say use that along with it. Now I realise that's not an awful lot of information this time around because I'm missing the SD card. When I finally get that, that'll be great and I can be able to show you things. Um, I might actually just put an episode up of where I'm just showing stuff. I'm not doing any talking, I'm just getting on with it and showing you as a sort of a bonus video midweek or something like that. Now the other thing I do want to mention though is that I've sent off to another company to get an, a little circuit board that actually replaces the RF. Um, circuit inside here and the whole idea of that is to clean everything up with a color bleed and stuff like that because from what I understand is that the signal comes away from the chip goes through the RF stuff and then gets to the composite and S video so you know the more components you're sliding on through the more likely stuff's gonna get messed up signal wise especially with the older technologies um, so that's gonna mean desoldering that out and then soldering this little PCB in. I have no idea when that will arrive, but I will make an episode about me fixing that so you'll get to, you know, join on in with that one. So, in the meantime, I hope that was some information in the realms of yes, I recommend going and getting a Lumafix 128. I definitely meant getting a Lumafix 64 if you have a 64 computer, because both of them I found have really cleaned up the picture. The 64 version that I used to have was, as you know, I have an Ultimate 64 now, but when I used to have a normal 64, the the pots and that and everything were simple to use, and it gave me a really clean picture, really, really clean. I was lucky enough that it did do one there, but the Lumafix 128 on here has done a very good job at cleaning it up. I may even try to do it again while it is actually going through all of this, um, to see how well it does through that but I'll wait now until I get the other little gadget because there's no point keeping open and closing I've not even put the screws back in yet so as I say hope that's some information go down to the bottom click the button for subscribe click that notification bell make some comments let me know where I'm going wrong where I'm going right what you'd like to see next 
Um, also, have, have a look at the Discord connections. That'd be great because it'd be nice to have some people come across and being chatty and sharing information. And then the other thing would be great for is become a patron. That'd be really, really nice. But as always, happy gaming.